everybody. I'm Craig Wolfley, and we're behind the curtain with Kendrick Green, presented by Windows 11. Young man, I have to tell you, I've waited a long time to be able to get introduced to you. I'm enjoying watching you. It's fun to see you. How are you doing? I'm good, man. Just hanging in there, uh, you know, trying to trying to roll with the punches this season, and uh, I appreciate y'all for having me. Well, Kendrick, I gotta I gotta ask you, what was your first reaction when you were found out you were drafted by the Steelers? Oh man, um, I knew it was a big possibility I could end up here in Pittsburgh. Um, I was hoping to end up here in Pittsburgh. If you uh, you guys ask my family, I was like, man, I hope I hope Coach Tomlin, you know, I hope those guys draft me. That would be nice. But um, and it worked out. I don't think it could have worked out better for me, man. I love it here. Um, been when I got that phone call initially, man, I I was like blacked out, like just so many emotions. I was so happy. <laughs> it was it was great. So, you know, Kendrick, I. I I love the fact you come in, first of all, that you moved from guard to center, which is a little unusual because you only played center a handful of times, but they projected you as a center. But you come in as a center, you make the jump, and you wind up with Marquise Pouncey's jersey, number 53. That's a little added pressure, is it not, when you've got a future Hall of Famer and his jersey number down to you? Uh, Yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, I wasn't playing or anything like that. Like I wore 53 in high school and all throughout college and stuff. But uh, but you know I definitely heard some things you know about you know Marquise Ponce. I've never have still haven't yet to yet to meet him actually. Um, look forward to meeting him one day. But um, but yeah man, uh, definitely I, I, it's an honor. So. Well, think about it. I mean, you start with the great uh, the Ranger Ray Mansfield way back in the 70s. You got Mike Webster. You got Dermani Dawson. I mean, Jeff Hardings, you got, you know, a host of guys, Marquise Pouncey, all these great centers. Uh, there's not too many teams around that can talk about having a lot of uh, several Hall of Famers at center. Yeah, I mean, you know, hopefully I can add my name to that list when, uh, you know, when it's time for me to hang up the cleats, right? But, um, but yeah, man, it's an honor, um, and I don't take that lightly, so. Well, how, how confident were you in making the jump from guard to center? Because I was a guard, Okay. So I played guard, but now unfortunately for me, I got bounced to tackle for a while. Now, I was only six one and a half, but I was the tallest of the guards in the Chuck Noll trapping guard era. So it was a little different animal, but I got bounced to tackle because all the tackles got hurt and I was the tallest guard by oh half an inch. So to me, that, that that's not much of a, a boost right. there. Um, you go to center, what was it like for you and were you confident you could come in and, and dominate the position? Uh, you know, with only, you know, playing most of my career in college uh, at guard, you know, just coming in and uh, only playing, you know, I think I have like two college practices at center, you know, I kind of was the emergency center on our team if our, if our number one guy went down. Um, I knew I could do it, you know, still some growing pains, getting used to playing the position to like even to this day. But, uh, you know, I'm definitely, definitely rolling with it and not taking it lightly. I'm working at it every day. So, um, I mean, I'm just ready to ready to be done with the growing stage and start dominating. So, <laughs> all right, you got a line coach that I love, Adrian Clem. Uh, I, I like to refer to you guys as the Clem Maniacs, the offensive lineman. You know, um, he's got a young bunch, and you got a young bunch for certain with you at center, Danny Moore at left tackle, and then of course you got Kevin Dotson, a first year starter. So, young guys, how has that been? Just getting it all together and trying to gel as an offensive line. Um, you know, I think with each coming week, you know, we're getting we're getting even better. You know what I mean? Uh, it's really, you know, it's really you know, reps are, uh, you know, are practice and meetings and, you know, going over stuff is one thing. But, man, those game reps, those are really that's when we really start seeing, you know, progress coming with each game that comes. You know, we see we get a little bit better and a little bit better. So, uh, you know, we got a guy, uh, our right guard, Trey Turner. You know, he's kind of the older guy in our group. He's been, you know, kind of like the voice in our uh, in our group and. He's that I think he's helped literally every all three of us, me too, or me, well, Chooks included, me, Chooks, Kevin Dotson, and Dan Moore. He's been he's been vital in my uh, development along with Coach Clem and Coach Chris Morgan. You know, that's the fun part because when I broke into the lineup my second year, and you're doing your rookie year, but there was Mike Webster at center, Hall of Famer, John Cole at left tackle. And you have these great ones, and it's it's wonderful in support when you got a Trey Turner to your side that veteranship that speaks to you. Uh, what is what is it meant with, with Ad, let me ask you this. Adrian Clem talks about demeanor. Okay, and the first thing I noticed with you is you kind of got that edge 
you have this tendency to block until the echo of the whistle, which is an old school trait. You could have played back in the 80s and 90s, <laughs> saying it would have been fun. But where did you develop that from? And what does demeanor mean to you? I mean, just playing offensive line in high school. You know, my, my high school head coach was an old line guy. He played college football, um, you know, at Division One football. And he always coached, you know, Coach Tim Thornton always told us, you know, play through the, play through the echo of the whistle, right? So, you know, uh, once you hear that whistle, then you give them a little bit more strain and then you let go. You know what I mean? Uh, so we always want, you know, it's something I always uh, try to take heed to even throughout college, just playing hard, playing through the whistle. And, uh, you know, and just w when you do it one day, you know, it, you kind of get that feeling of that first pancake when you're young and, you know, you, you, you love it. So, you know, you keep at it. And that's, that's what I've been doing my, my whole career and playing ball. Yeah, I noticed just watching you take – particular glee and finishing some people off which i i love i mean like i said that's just old school young man so uh from from an old buck listen to talking to a young buck I, that we greatly appreciate your style of play now let me ask this what's it what was your biggest challenge going from a guard to center what was the hardest thing for you to overcome uh you know i think it's just you know a little bit of everything you know center you know you're, you're kind of directing traffic right uh you know, and we do have an NFL playbook. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, that that's one thing. But, um, you know, I, I think I, I did I did pretty well with, you know, getting the playbook down, getting the plays down, making the calls and, you know, IDing things the right way. But, you know, I guess, you know, at guard, I'm sure you remember, you know, you kind of got a little bit of space off the ball. You know, you're, you're right. right up at the center's heel. But, you know, at center, you're right on top of the ball, right? You know what I mean? Uh, but there's some advantages with that as well. You know, like only I, I snap the ball. So I know when, you know, I mean, you know what I mean? So I. It, there's pros and cons that come with it, but um, I would definitely say just, you know, being up on the ball and having a little bit less space to work with, I think, is uh, the biggest thing that, as, that I've had to adjust with, with, I think, is honestly be starting to become a strength of mine. You know, it's interesting because Mike Webster always re referenced the fact, he says, I don't have to be the fastest. I only need to be the quickest for the first three steps. Mm -hmm. One, two, boom, lock in. He'd snap and be able to lock up with the nose tackle or whatever you know, immediately on the snap. And I noticed that you're starting to get that. It's kind of like the Michael Corleone thing from The Godfather. You know, keep your keep your friends close, but keep your enemies closer. <laughs> you get locked in with them. Absolutely. You know, uh, I want to get my hands on first, like you just said, you know. Uh, it's all about that initial step, man. So, I, 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 man, I wish I could meet my wife, Mike Webster. That'd be, you know what I mean? But uh, but absolutely, no, he's, he's, he was spot on with that one, so. Oh, Webby was just the greatest man. I love that man. He was just special. And, uh, you know, he passed away. But the fact yeah. is, um, uh, he is one of those guys that you can emulate. Matter of fact, ask Adrian to get you some tape on, <laughs> on Mike Webster. There you go. And you, 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 you'd learn a lot from that guy. That's for sure. Real quick, before we finish up here, tell me what you like best about being a Pittsburgh Steeler. What is, what is, what is it about it? Man, the first thing I noticed when I got off the plane to get in Pittsburgh for the first time, these people love the Steelers, man. I think that is so special. Uh, coming from where I'm from, I'm not. Uh, I'm, I live about two hours outside of Chicago. That's where I'm originally from. You know, Bears, Bears Nation. I was never a Bears fan growing up or anything like that. But man, uh, when I did used to visit Chicago, you know, there's Bears fans, but the, people don't love the Bears in Chicago like people love the Steelers in Pittsburgh. I think that's the best thing, man. Uh, Fans love us everywhere we go. We're recognized. People show love, man. I think I think that's truly special. If you had one thing to say, what's encapsulated your whole journey thus far to Pittsburgh, what would it be? Man, I would say so. I got two things for you, man. One being like, you know, our first home game we played the Raiders. Um, just coming out with my name with the starting lineup, man. And just hearing the crowd yell, that was yeah. a surreal moment for sure. But. um that that would be second to man. I one day I'm getting ready for the game. I forget who we're playing. I think it was Sunday night football. We're about to play Seattle, and um, I'm going about my business, headphones on, and I'm looking at my phone, turn a corner, boop, see a dude with a bunch of hair. I'm like, what the? Hell? And then just Troy Polamalu. I like, <laughs> I was like, oh my god. I text my dad immediately. My dad and my brother like, dude, I just met Troy Polamalu. Oh my, god. like that was crazy. And uh, I, I would say that that's been my favorite moment so far. Well, thank you so much, Kendrick. I appreciate your time. You know, um, it's busy during the season, but you know what? Like I said, I love watching you play. That's a, you're a throwback to the old school guys. Thanks so much for joining us. 
Appreciate you guys for having me. I'll take care.